Looks like things are coming together. Yeah. We still need to figure out lighting, music, and something to write on that banner. If we're gonna die, we should have some fun first. Music? But Lewis isn't here. See that? <laughs> it's like Lewis in a box. Pulled out the old headmaster's gramophone so he could play some records. Not much of a selection, but it should do. Wouldn't happen to have any good jazz records, would you? Oh, yeah. The old music teacher was a big fan. Pretty cool guy up until he ditched us all. What's jazz sound like? Uh, well, that one's hard to describe. Mm, just wait till you hear it. So you take one of those black things that look like plates and you put it on here. And then it plays music? Wouldn't be a party without some kind of mood lighting. I've been going back and forth between colors for ages. Green's calming, but purple might be nice. Rim gets natural moonlight, so something to compliment that, maybe? Hmm. Well, purple was my dad's favorite color. I read somewhere purple was a color of royalty. Purple. <laughs> really? What? I like purple. Shouldn't you like it too, Violet? I'll make it happen. Are we using the banner for some kind of party theme? Mm, not exactly. It's meant to be more motivational. I'd keep it short, though. There's not as much room as you think. I was thinking something uplifting, like, we're gonna get through this. Straight and to the point. We're getting them back. Yeah, we sure are. Okay, we'll have Ten break out his paintbrush and ride it out. This place is gonna look great. Oh, and Willie was asking for you. He's up in Marlin's office. He said he had a surprise for the party, but he wanted to show it to you first. Hey, Clem, check it out. I found a bunch of books on ships. There's some awesome stuff about fires at sea and explosions and stuff. The key is the boiler. Wait, what are you talking about? I have an idea about how to stop those assholes coming back to the school after we've rescued the others. And from hurting anyone else ever again. We're gonna blow up the boat. It's the only way to make sure they don't come back. Besides, it feels right, you know? For Mitch. Nice. Mitch would love this plan. I know, it's perfect. I can't think of a better memorial than to blow that boat out of the water. The tricky bit is timing the explosion so that it happens after you get off the boat. Trust me, this'll work. We'll be okay. Okay, everybody, get ready to boogie. And, um, Clem? I'm sorry for before, about how he treated Ten. I didn't mean to get so angry. I know it's not his fault. That's nice, Willie, but don't tell me. Tell Ten. Wow, this looks great, Ruby. Couldn't have done it without you. But just wait till you see what else I've got planned. Go ahead and mingle. I'll let you know when it's time. I guess I'll mingle? I see you two are working together. Yeah, Willie asked me to help with his special project. Well, that's good to hear. Is it ready? Good to go, Clem. It'll work. Actually, uh, I was thinking maybe we should name it. Something cool. I mean, I think it deserves a name. Yeah, we absolutely have to name it. 
I thought you'd make fun of me, but hell yeah. Let's name this fucker. How about Mitch's masterpiece? Yeah, I like that. Mitch would have too. Okay, then it's settled. <laughs> I found them. Okay, Clementine. These here are our official Erickson psych evaluations and probationary reports. Okay. I don't get it. Well, these explain why all of us got sent to this school in the first place. And all the bad shit we did that kept them from sending us back home. So, what's the game? I figured if we're all going on this crazy mission together, we might as well know who we really are. So, I'll read some of what the adults thought about us. And you have to guess which one of us fits the bill. I'll make sure it's someone you've actually met. This'll be the first one. While otherwise a remarkable student, blank continues to be plagued by fits of anger, uncontrollable cursing, and repeated physical altercations with the senior faculty. You know what, Ruby? I bet you're reading your own file. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> You guessed that. <laughs> I'm impressed. I mean, I can totally see it. The first time I met Ruby, she was all that little motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I said I was sorry. Yeah, you should have seen Ruby back in the early days. She was like, uh, you ever seen those Tasmanian devil cartoons when you were a kid? <laughs> that was our Ruby. You used to have a mean streak a mile long. <laughs> Don't worry. That was a long time ago. You guys want to know why I got sent here? Willie, please, no. Chronic masturbation. Trust me. Nobody wanted to know that. What does that mean? Uh, -uh don't you dare. Uh, anyway, maybe we should change up the music? I like all kinds of different music, I think. There's a lot of them. How many? Sure, we've heard enough of this. Put on the classical stuff. I didn't realize how many of us we lost. Remember that Justin guy? And Theresa and Jasper, that one girl with colored braces, and Joey, Maddie, Lamar? Erin. Yeah, I used to make fun of her braces. Why did I do that? Alex, Dewey, Trey, Stephanie. Holy crap, how many of us died? 34. Whose is it? Lewis. Should we read it? I could tell you why I was sent here instead. You know, as a consolation prize or whatever. You might hate me after, but since we're all being so open and all. I was hoping you'd tell me. I spent a lot of time at my grandma's house growing up. What with my dad being a drunk and my mom working three jobs. But after my grandpa died, grandma just kind of shut down. Spent all day and night rocking in her little chair in the den. I'd sit there at her feet as we both watched TV. Mostly cartoons, and she never seemed to care. Sometimes I could hear her crying, but I didn't look back. I'd just feel really weird and turn up the volume. You know? Anyway, one day she left the den and 
came back with another chair and a 22 rifle. Set the rifle butt on the top of the chair, holding the barrel back to her chest. So, you know, she had trouble reaching the trigger this way, but she must have known it would happen because she took out this really tacky wooden back scratcher, the real long kind with the one end shaped like a hand, and uh, used that to push the trigger in. So yeah, bang, right? Her body folded up and just kept rocking. My mom came to get me five hours later. I hadn't moved. She asked why I didn't call the police or an ambulance or anything. I just shrugged and told her it wasn't like grandma was going anywhere. And besides, I just wanted to finish my cartoons. She shipped me off to Erickson the next day. I was 11. I'm so sorry, Violet. I can't imagine what that was like, what you went through. It's fine. We've just been through a lot of shit. We weren't good people, Clementine. But it still doesn't mean that we should have been left here to die by the people that were supposed to take care of us. Sorry. This is supposed to be fun. I'm I'm just not the game type, like Lewis was, I guess. You mean is. We'll see him soon. Ten's right. Hey, I've got an idea. Do you guys remember when Minnie would sing us Don't Be Afraid when all of us used to get scared? Too bad I can't play it. Lou would have known how. He liked that one. You could just sing it to us, like she used to. Your voice is really pretty. Okay. Okay, yeah. All right, I, uh, I can do that.
Hey, sweet pea. We? Why the train? You always pick the train. I'm not sure. Maybe because this is where it all started. Where you taught me to shoot and to cut my hair. To be ready for what was coming. Uh, you were a quick study. So, what's on your mind this time? I'm worried, Lee. I've got a lot of people depending on me. And I don't know if what I'm doing is right. Oh, I know that feeling. You know, I was uh, making it all up as I went along, right? <sighs> Couldn't let on, of course. With you being so little. I never noticed. It just felt like you always knew the right thing to do. Yeah? <laughs> well, I got lucky. Luck counts for a lot. I'm gonna need some now. You wanna tell me about what you're up against? I'm with a new group now. And I've been in so many. And they always fall apart. But I really like this one. It's different. It almost feels like home. That's a good thing. It's hard being alone out there. But we're in trouble. Some bad people captured my friends, and getting them back might get the rest of us killed. I'm not worried. What? Whatever trouble you're in, you get out of it. You get your friends out of it. You don't know that. I know you're a survivor. The Clementine I know is gonna fix it. I really believe that. But what if I can't? I'm so scared for my friends, Lee. Scared that I'll... I'll let them down. It's normal to be scared. Hell, it'd be strange if you weren't. But you can't let it get to you. Imagine what Lewis is gonna say when he sees your face. Those boys are gonna have hope again, knowing that you came to rescue them. <sighs> oh, Sweet Pea, you know you always get like this before something big. Remember how scared you were before you charged into that mess at McCarroll Ranch? You survived that, didn't you? That was different. I was alone. I know. It's harder when you have something to lose. But having people you care about, that's a good thing. Friends, a girl who loves you. They're fighting beside you because of you. Come see me again when you've gotten them out, okay? Out and safe. Sound good? And hopefully we can talk about happier things. If you know of any. Out and safe. My friends are fighters. We can do this. <sighs> to think when I cut your hair. I was just following the advice of an old drunk we just met. But you. You have a knack for surviving. You've kept those kids alive. They look up to you. You're a leader, Clem. A natural. Thank you, Lee. Talking to you always makes me feel a little bit better. I meant to ask. How's the boy? He's good, Lee. You'd like him. I bet. You teach him to shoot yet? <laughs> you have no idea. I guess the world got pretty hard since I left it. A kid growing up in it, he'd be hard too. You're in my shoes now, raising a kid. Think you got a handle on it? Uh, it can't be easy. Wanting to give him a childhood, but 
Knowing what it takes to survive now. I really don't know. The world AJ was born into is awful. It's really awful now, Lee. And I just don't know if I'm teaching him right. I can't think of anyone who could do it better. city. You know, I told you to avoid those. They don't. No one goes into the cities anymore. It's an old boarding school, in the woods, miles from anywhere, with no adults at all. No adults? It works, I promise. Time to go, Clementine. You've got people that need you. Goodbye, Lee. Clem, wake up. It's time to go. We got a long walk. Guess we're really doing this. Only the team blending in with the walkers need to cover themselves. Now we just need your walker friend to... He's here. Good lord. Uh, hello. Guys, this is James. He's my friend. He's, uh, so cool. How do you get the skin like that? Uh, oh. I, um, Clementine? Can I try it on? That's not a good idea. Come on, please. Well, come on, give him some space. But I just want to... Not right now. Yeah, right. Sorry. I didn't mean to be weird or anything. It's okay. Oh, and sorry I tried to shoot you that one time. Your mask looks so real. I, uh, uh, hey... Hey there, James. Sorry about Willie. Um, Clementine, could I speak to you alone for a moment? Good idea. Hold tight. Hey, Tank, can you come talk for a sec? There's something I have to tell you. The walkers. They'll be here in a little while. You can join them as they pass through the trees. The noise from the boat will draw them toward the water. Then we can get on board and save our friends. Your friends are... different. Open-minded. Accepting. Like you. That's not usually how my first impressions go. Sorry, I feel like I'm rambling. It's just... being welcomed. It's strange. You know... They could be your friends, too. I know you didn't want to come into the school before, but now that you've met them... I haven't lived with people in a long time. But... it does sound nice. Let me think about it. I 
wanted to show you something. This is... was my boyfriend, Charlie. We joined the Whisperers together. But it changed him. In a way that couldn't be undone. It changed both of us. What do you mean? The Whisperers were my family. From a young age. In that time, I witnessed a lot of death and suffering. Eventually, I became the cause of it. Weakness was considered a poison. And I believed in that. Fiercely. So much so. That when another boy expressed sympathy for our enemy before an attack. I slit his throat. I didn't talk to him. Didn't consider who he was. What he felt. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even remember his name. All I knew was someone like him would only slow us down. That was enough of a reason for me. That's... that's kind of hard to believe. Doesn't sound anything like you. Not anymore. But it was. And I had no doubt in my mind that I was right. After he died, I kept hearing his words in my head. Those people are like us. Just on a different path. I stopped killing after that. I changed. And no one else did. When AJ told me he killed someone, it reminded me of them. Of myself. He said it was wrong, but it sounded like he was just repeating what he'd been told. Taking life like that, from a young age, it breaks something inside you. It broke something in Charlie. I just... I'm afraid if AJ kills again, he won't be able to go back. He won't be the same boy he was. I've seen it happen too many times. I'm not going to let AJ become a killer. I don't want him to change. Not like that. I hope you can keep that promise. They're close. Soon there will be enough of them to provide us cover. I'll lead you through the herd until you reach the boat. That's as far as I go. After that, it's up to you. Thank you. Take care of AJ. Okay, he's ready to go. The walkers are getting close. Ruby, you're in charge of the horses. Willie, Dan, take care of the supplies. I've got the bomb. Find the boiler. There'll be a door on the bottom with ash and stuff. Put it in there. See you all on the other side. I'll cut it open. Violet told me about Minnie. That Sophie died, and Minnie is one of them now. Just... If you see her out there, tell her... Tell her I forgive her. Please. I tell her myself, but... I just want her to be okay. Yeah, sure. If we see her, I'll let her know. Thanks. Hey, it's time. We gotta move. Clem? What happens if someone else gets caught while we're in there? What if it's you? I couldn't save Minnie or Lou or a Sim. Omar. I, I, I really care about you, Clem. 
If something happened to you because of me... I can't lose you too. I won't. You better not disappear on me, okay? I promise. <laughs> what are you doing? Go look in another direction. Are we good? Yeah, I think so. Okay, let's bring our friends back home. All of them. All of them. It's ready. So, I know this is gonna sound gross, but... Covering your smell. <laughs> Smart. Get my back. Thanks. We gonna do it? We're doing it. Okay, follow my lead. Here we go. Stay behind the walkers. Use them as shields. Our chance. We can't risk leaving cover. We'll have to crawl along the side of the dock. The guts are washing off. way. Stay close. Stay hidden.
Come on, let's hurry. Ready, AJ? Walkers! Getting close. After we find the boiler and place the bomb, we'll get our friends out. Minnie said there were eight raiders, but we didn't see that many outside. Look out for guards and stay quiet, okay? Right behind you. Good. I'll scout ahead and signal when it's clear. Got it? It looks like it. That's where we need to plant the bomb. There's too much stuff in the way. Maybe there's another way in. go, Mitch's masterpiece. Bury this thing in the bottom of the river. Once they start up this boat, we won't have much time before it explodes. How long? Not sure. An hour, 30 minutes. Let's hurry up then. Focus. Yes, ma'am. I, I have a little brother, short, scarred face. See? He's not out there, is he? Look, we've discussed this. Your family is Delta now. There ain't no room for anyone else. Yes, ma'am. Oh, shit. Of course. 
Oh, she had to be the cell guard. We can't sneak past her. Get out. Not without our people. I swear to God, if you got Ten caught up in this, just, just tell me that he's safe. Give me that. He told me to tell you. He forgives you. <sighs> Shit. I'll help you get everyone out. Then you take my brother and run. Get him back to where it's safe. Come on, we have to hurry. Clementine? Holy fuck! Oh my god, are you okay? He doesn't look hurt. I... Uh, yeah, I'm alright. We're alright. Take care of Louis first. He's... he's in rough shape. I'll unlock the other cell. We don't have a lot of time before Dorian comes back. Violet, help me with these guys. Got it. Louis. Louis. What the fuck are you doing? Please. Don't now. fucking point it at me. You're in Violet. Don't have me. Louis. What did they do to you? No! No, no, don't. They, they, uh... They cut out his tongue. He just, uh, he kept fucking talking. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, Louis. <laughs> I'll make these bastards pay for this. I promise you, Louis. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You'll be home soon. I'll get us out of here. I promise. here that long. Looks like there's a gap here. <sighs> Too small to fit my hand through. Clem, are you all right? I'm fine. Where's AJ? Over here! <sighs> Thank God. Shit. At least we're not moving yet. We've still got time to figure this out. Vi, are you all right? I'm fine. Looking for a way out. If this thing explodes...
You doing okay in there, AJ? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm looking for a way out. Yeah, me too. The doors don't look very well made. Maybe that's something we can work with. I might be able to chip away at this if I had a tool or... Damn it, they must have taken away my knife. AJ! Do you still have your knife? Yeah, they didn't find it. Only the big one. Good. I need you to slide it over to me. Whatever you doing, don't. I promise you, it ain't worth it. Step back. She awake? Yes, ma'am. Good. I'll take it from here. Where's Abel? He's dead. We killed him. We put a knife in his head. Fuck. You little monster. Damn it! We showed him mercy. He was terrified of turning, so we stopped him from having to. We gave him what he wanted. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Back up. Minerva. Open the door. Yes, ma'am. Normally, the trouble you caused, I'd shoot you and toss you overboard. But I'm genuinely impressed. First, you organized these idiot kids into a fighting force and killed two of my most experienced soldiers. Then you sneak onto my boat under the cover of a herd. I bring a prize like you back to the Delta. It might make this whole clusterfuck of a mission worth it. Someone like you, so young with so much potential, you're far too valuable to kill. You should have never attacked us, Lily. Your mission was a bad idea from the start, and you failed. And you're still mouthing off, despite being in a cell. That'll change. You know, my father, Larry, was a military man. And when I was a kid, he had all kinds of rules. The thing that bugged him most was waste. If I ever left a light on after leaving a room, <laughs> he'd flip. No matter how many times he ranted about the cost of electricity, I could never remember to hit that switch. So? So one day, he let our power get cut. He liked illustrations to show that actions have consequences. No more TV, no more hair dryer, no more ice cream sandwiches. Just a miserable family sitting in the dark. Well, I guess asshole runs in the family. Is that the consequence? That you're an asshole? The consequence is, I never left the lights on again. My father had his faults, but he showed me the effectiveness of teaching by example. Oh, is that what this is? A lesson?
I want to tell you a story. Let's call it the Parable of the Twins. Two girls were taken from their home and brought to a new place to live. They had to leave their friends and family behind, and that was hard at first. They shed a lot of tears. But the new place was a good place. The people there grew corn and raised pigs, and the twins ate well for the first time in years. They had hot showers, clean clothes, beds. They were given guns and trained to use them. The people there were kind to these girls. All that was asked in return was that they help defend the group. You see, this place had a lot of enemies, killers and thieves who wanted what they had. Kidnapping people and forcing them to fight? Sounds like slavery to me. Call it whatever you want. They were helping each other survive. One of the girls saw that this was a place worth fighting for, and her tears dried. But the other twin, she could never forget her old home. She rejected every gift, every opportunity, stirred up trouble every chance she got. She convinced her sister to help her steal a raft and leave on the river. Of course, they didn't get far. What happened then, Minerva? I killed her. What the Jesus fuck? Jesus Christ. Minnie. No, tell me it's not true. Your own sister? Why would you do that? She was twisting my head with her lies. And? I made a mistake. I needed to show my loyalty to the place I call home. Like it or not, you're one of my people now, Clem. The question is, which twin are you going to be? The loyal one, or the dead one? What have you done to her head, you fucking psychotic bitch? You're evil! You are fucking evil! Y'all better back away from the door. Violet, calm down. You saw what they did to Lewis. Just do what they say. Why? So I can become a soldier in their army? Someone who kills the people they love? Fuck that! Pull the mouthy one out of the cell. They clearly didn't get the moral of the story. We'll have to help them understand. Stop! Don't hurt Violet, or I'll hurt you. Hey, yo, you better cool it or you gonna get yourself hurt. Fuck no! Get off of me! Uh. Easy! Uh. Stay still! Shit. Fuck you, no! Don't make this hurt more than it has to. Come on. Just breathe. Hey, Jay! Son of a bitch! Stop! That's enough. He bit me! I said, that's enough! You deserve to die. We'll kill you! You think you can kill me? I know I can! We'll throw you in the river! I will put a knife right to the side of your head! Big talk for a little guy. <sighs> I know I can do it. I killed Marlin. He wasn't a monster, but you are! Dang. So you killed Marlin. Huh. I bet you'd make a great soldier. Leave him alone. This is between us. Clem seems to care a lot about you. Come on, let's go have a chat. Just us. Don't you fucking touch him! Clem! No, no, please! Clementine! AJ! Keep an eye on her, Minerva. 
Lily, don't! Get thing moving. I want to be far away from here. Fast. I'll start up the boiler. Don't. Don't you dare look at me like that. This is the only way we survive. Who are you? Fuck survival! Look at what you're doing! Minnie, please. I just want to talk to you for a second. I'm sorry we never searched for you, for Sophie. I'm sorry we trusted that fucker, Marlin. If I ever thought there was a chance... I know. I know, okay? But Sophie's... You all need to understand. This is the only way. Lay down, stay in line, or you die. The people you love die. If you just do what they say, you can live. All of you. I'm sorry, Minerva. For everything. Behind you! You're the fucking problem here! I won't let you get them all killed! No! We have to go. I can't... I can't leave her. Go, I'll catch up. Clem, come on! We have to get the hell out of here. Go, I need to find AJ. Better see you on land. You will. Focus that energy. Sharpen it. I've known Clementine since before this all started. She'll come around. You'll come around too, once you see what we have to offer. Plenty of food, comfortable beds. For You'll you come around too. You can even once share you see a room. What we have to offer. From Plenty one more food, sneaky comfortable beds for you and Clem. You can even share. Tin! Fuck. Tennessee, did you get lost? Ma'am! He wasn't alone. I got something else to show you. This way. Found this in a herd. <clears throat> no wonder there were so many walkers. Must have thought you were clever leading those walkers here. Or was that Clementine's idea? Nothing to say? You don't fucking scare me. Is that so? Force your ways onto others. Because you're afraid. Because you're weak. I give my people a cause to fight for. The thing about people like him, AJ, is that they're too broken to fit into a community. They won't fight for anyone but themselves. <coughs> Kill it. No! What the fuck? Easy there, Ten. Don't hurt him. Just stop hurting people. Please. Shooter! Why don't we all just take a breath, all right? Give me my friends back. Put down the gun. Let them go. All of us. Or... or else. Fine. Go ahead, then. Do it. Save your friends. That's what you came here to do, isn't it? <coughs> oh, I see. You came here to cry. Tim. 
Looks like you're not a soldier either. Please, don't! No! Threat. Lower the gun. You weren't down there. You didn't see what she did. She cut my friend's tongue out. <sighs> you don't have to do this, please. It's a trick. Don't you fucking dare, AJ. Just give me the gun. You can't let her hurt anyone else. Lower the gun, AJ. Okay. sorrow cast out in this wide world to roam uncertain of life for tomorrow I want to make heaven my home sometimes I am tossed and driven sometimes I know not where to roam I heard of a city called heaven I'm striving to make it my home I have a few days yet to wander a few more hard battles to fight no comfort I find in the daylight the storms are descending each night sometimes i'm both tossed and driven sometimes i know not where to roam i heard of a city called heaven i'm going to make it my home I 
Sometimes I am tossed and driven, sometimes I know not where to roll. I heard of a city called heaven, I'm striving to make it my home. I see the old ship drawing near. and companions your fate and my own are the same sometimes I'm all tossed and driven sometimes I'm 